Welcome back to another exciting episode of Spartan TV. In the province of New Brunswick, it is not a secret any longer that there is a limited supply of educational staff. This has been affecting schools around the province, but has only become prominent in the past few years. In this segment, we're going to speak to some of the province's lead of education and find the root of this issue. First, we're going to speak with Connie Keating, who is the president of the New Brunswick Teachers Association. Hi, Connie. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Hi, Ian. It's a real pleasure to be with you today. I think, you know, comparing to your first steps going into education, that it was hard to get contracted as a teacher. That's definitely ships, or shifted in uh, recent times. Now it's, it's, we're seeing shortages all around the province. Um, for teachers. We need, we're, we're needing teachers here in, in the New Brunswick school system. Connie, why are we seeing that right now? So Ian, I just want to preface, certainly we're seeing the shortage uh, in New Brunswick, but the bigger picture is that there's actually a shortage of teachers across Canada, across North America, and ultimately across the world. So this is an absolutely you know perfect time as students are considering a career uh, to be entering into the teaching profession. In terms of you know, what has led to the shortages, there, I don't know that we could pin it down to necessarily you know, one or two specific reasons. But basically, you know, nowadays there are so many um, avenues uh, for students to explore. So there are jobs now that, you know, when students first started school, uh, never existed. And so there were so many, I guess, other opportunities outside of, you know, going in down traditional routes. And so because of these shortages that are all across North America as we know it, what are some of the impacts that the schools and uh, school districts are having, Connie? Our um, supply teacher list basically has has dwindled. And so we see a large number of unfilled uh, positions, certainly in the last few months. Um, but in, as I noted before, um, outside of, you know, major cities, um, the supply shortage has always uh, been in effect. So there are more people that are moving to cities as opposed to the outskirts of a city. And so there has uh, always been that shortage there. So after seeing all these evolutions and, and seeing the shortages that are happening, why might students want to pursue education as a career? What, what, what are like the benefits? Why, why should we go to university and take an education degree? Well, Ian, I guess I would start with, with, you know, throw a question back and say, you know what, why not? An education degree um, can be used in a number of ways, which I noted and, and you noted at the beginning of, you know, our conversation. Um, being able to influence uh, the lives of, you know, many generations, um, you know, having an impact on the future of um, your province, uh, your small town. Uh, I noted that your education degree can travel with you, uh, but certainly, you know, from my perspective as a New Brunswick teacher, I would hope that students who, you know, aspire to become teachers, you know, take the opportunity to travel, but then to come back home, um, either to Canada or to New Brunswick and to their small community and actually become uh, contributing members of their small community if it happened to be small community or their city or whatever. I, I could not agree more with uh, what you said. I mean, teachers are ultimately influencing our next generation and helping influence and, you know, rebuild the world almost. So, uh, that's all the questions I have for you today, Connie. Thank you so much for joining me today here on Spartan TV. I really appreciate the opportunity, Ian, and I'm just going to throw another little, little thought in there mm -hmm. that something that I have always taught my students, whether they were at the elementary, middle, and high school level, is that really through education, all things are possible. And so things that you absolutely enjoy, whether it happens to be sports or music, um, the subjects that you, know, that you really, really are passionate about, they transfer very nicely um, to education. And, it, and 
education just really is so important um, to the future success of um, students. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Connie. My pleasure, Ian. It was so awesome to be able to talk to Connie Keating and get a more provincial look at the teacher shortage. Now, let's bring it back to Charlotte County and talk to Derek O'Brien, who is the Director of Schools for the Charlotte County area at the St. Stephen Education Center. Mr. O'Brien, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. It's great to be here. Thank you. And education obviously sounds like a very rewarding career. How come we're seeing shortages here in the province then? Well, it's been, uh, I think it's a growing situation across the country, not just in, in teaching positions, but also in other, other professions and other uh, skills areas. And uh, we seem to be always searching for employees. Um, I think a particular issue for those of us here in the St. Stephen Education Center and even in New Brunswick as a whole is that people are looking for more urban centers for their careers, especially young people coming out of universities and colleges are looking to be in busier areas of our country. Mm -hmm. And that certainly holds true even here in New Brunswick uh, with us in Charlotte County, as I think people are looking for the more urban and the busier centers in our province versus coming to rural areas to work. So due to these impacts of these, uh, these people going to these more urban centers and maybe not choosing education as a career path, what are the impacts in schools we are seeing because of this? Well, we know each year that it's very challenging. It has been for probably the last five years as we've been uh, recruiting uh, teachers to different positions. And it was specifically around uh, French second language programs as well as the skilled trades area. Those are two that stand out for me where we were uh, often searching for people and trying to recruit them to come to our schools. The, I think that's expanded over the last few years and I would say that almost any teaching position that I know is vacant, it's going to be challenge, uh, challenging to fill that for those reasons that we, we spoke about. Um, and I think that any initiatives that we can come up with in order to recruit people to the profession, are, are, those are really important. We're talking about your job, obviously involves lots of recruitment of teachers. So what would you say to students who are maybe unsure of if they want to become teachers in the province? Like, What would you say to maybe persuade them? What are some of the benefits of being a teacher here in New Brunswick? Well, I think there are huge benefits. As I mentioned earlier, education has been a passion for me all of my life, and I think that I find rewards within my job. So getting up and coming to work uh, isn't a difficult task because I love the work that we do. Um, I, would, I would encourage people who are considering the field of education to certainly explore it because it can be extremely rewarding. I would tell them very upfront that it, it is not easy work, it is very difficult work, but I think that the really good teachers are teachers that enjoy a challenge and, and teaching is certainly has its challenges, but those can be very rewarding at the same time. That's all the questions I have for you today, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you so much for joining me. You're very welcome and thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Mr. O'Brien brought up some really important points and we can see that it's not just happening elsewhere in the province. The teacher shortage is happening here in Charlotte County. Now finally, we had the opportunity to speak with Zoe Watson, who is the superintendent of Anglophone South School District, which includes Charlotte County. Let's go talk to Zoe and see what her experience is with this issue. Hi, Ms. Watson. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak Thank with me today. Thank you for the invitation, Ian. So obviously, coming along with the shortage of teachers, there have been lots of impacts, including you know COVID-related things. but. What are some of the impacts in schools that we are seeing due to the shortage of teachers in our province? Well, um, starting before the March break, a huge challenge for us is finding enough casual staff. Uh, we are seeing more staff absence now, more sick leave um, taken by staff. And I think, you know, we have staff who um, have children who are sick or they're sick themselves and that in the last two months has been uh, a great challenge because we do want to see schools stay open so that students can be learning in person because we're a rather unique profession that to have school if someone's missing they have to be replaced the bus driver has to be replaced 
the teacher has to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So that has been a challenging part of the pandemic um, more recently. Not so much in the, in the fall, although the teacher shortage and the casual supply teacher shortage, it was starting before the pandemic uh, because our district would have to be very strategic in um, not booking too many meetings or professional development for teachers. Let's just think of a, a teacher who is trying to decide if they want to be a teacher or not. What are some qualities that might make a good teacher in, for the students who might consider pursuing education? Okay. I would say, first of all, you have to be a people person and enjoy working with students. And uh, some people like working with the very young children um, and others prefer working with teenagers. And I think some people who are drawn to education maybe like me started out teaching Sunday school, teaching junior choir, so church and community groups or camps, that type of thing. And, and I think if that's something that you enjoy, um, chances are you, you may enjoy the profession of being a teacher. So now that we know the qualities that we look for in a teacher, what are some ways that we can kind of combat this uh, shortage of teachers in the district? Well, perhaps we need to do more to, um, to profile teaching as a profession for young people in our high schools. Uh, that was a conversation that I just had today with one of our directors that, you know, we do a lot of job fairs and universities come in and talk to young people, but, uh, you know, you see teachers, but it, it might be worth us as a school district doing more to profile this profession, to keep people uh, in our area and to point out the reasons why someone may want to go into education. That's all the questions I have for you today. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today here on Spartan TV. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's been fun. You're hearing from these educational administrators, it is evident that the profession of a teacher is one of great impact and reward. To become a teacher is to become a person of influence to the next generation. Teachers are important to our world, and without them, we would be lost. Everyone has that special teacher that they can reflect upon who has helped drive a passion and set them on a path to excellence. The profession needs these types of people, and if you see yourself impacting the lives of many, then maybe teaching is for you. Without it, we do not have doctors, lawyers, the world ceases to be. Teaching is the one profession that creates other professions. Stay tuned next month where we dive into healthcare shortages in the province. Now over to Abby and Maddie with International Students. This year at St. Stephen High School, we have exchanged students from six different countries and as diversity is a huge part of our school, we are incredibly thankful to host them. There are students attending our school from Germany, Spain, South Korea, Japan, Latvia, and Switzerland. We're so excited to dive deeper and learn more about their country's culture and individual traditions. Hi, my name is Amanda. I come from Spain. My name is Chinan Bishi. I'm from Hong Kong. I'm Yannick. I'm Lisa. I'm Maya. I'm David. I'm Chalash. Uh, we're all from Germany. Um, my name is Yusei. Uh, I'm from Japan. Hi, my name is Jazz. I'm from Mexico City. Nice to meet you. All of our exchange students endured a huge move and an incredible cultural shift. Our Japanese exchange student traveled the farthest at nearly 14,000 kilometers. It was fascinating to hear them tell stories of their culture shock and a little bit of homesickness. I come from a really big city. Normally I see a lot of people I don't know. One of the things is uh, like, it's pretty small. Uh, 
정할 수 없기 때문입니다. So I think I think there is a lot of like forest. Um, the different culture, the people, it's really nice. The first thing I notice is that the dogs are in the car and maybe are in the front seat and that they are looking out at the windows. Yeah, that's a love for yeah. me. It's not. It's no, it's not. <laughs> In Mexico, we are really warm, and here some of them are really cold. Yeah, for me it was too that because I'm from Hamburg. Hamburg is a very big city, and since he was very small, so it was a very big difference for me. But I like it that it's here very small. Um, my house is so far from here, so um, maybe the the person have to have a like. Huh? Yeah, I like. I, I think the people are much nicer here. I don't know. It depends on the region where you are, I guess. But the people here are nice. Yeah. The Canadian winter was another big shift for a lot of our exchange students, and our students from typically warmer climates were especially shocked. Some even saw snow for the first time. Snow is the best thing in the winter. That's yeah, also that's true. true. Because I don't want to have it. In North Germany, you have never snow. Yeah. Oh. Actually, you do have some snow, but it's but gone it's in a couple much. of days, yeah. or it is like one centimeter tall. Yeah. So. yeah. In Japan, we don't have so much snow, so um, I like the snowing. I'm really cold all the time, <laughs> and the, the winter is nice, the view is nice, but for me it's really cold, so... I was excited to like see the snow, because it's not something normal to me. I like it, it's my first time with the snow, so it's exciting. I like snow, I like the cold, so yeah, it's good for me. I'm trying to get used to the, the cold, I'm not used to it. So I like it, but I prefer like summer. <laughs> Along with the move our new students have endured, they're also living with a new family. As expected, all of our exchange students love their hosts, and they've settled in quite nicely, even if they do miss their parents' cooking, as we'll hear later on. Um, at first it was strange because it's like, uh, it's not your family. Um, at first it was really shocking. They have helped me since I got here, so it, it was difficult, but I got used to it. Having a dog and a cat really does help a lot. <laughs> I've got two dogs and one pet now. Yeah, they choose my wires. They are really nice. We do different activities like games and a lot of chat about the love stories and Christmas and yeah, I I like them. Christmas is a very exciting time of year for most Canadians. We decorate our houses from head to toe, Santa brings presents on Christmas Eve, and the family gathers around to open them on the morning of the 25th. I wonder how our traditions differ from those of our exchange students. In Japan, we celebrated only December 25th. And we open the presents at a different time. We do it at the 24th. Yeah. It would always be like 50-50 for me. Like, one half of the family would get the presents on the 24th <laughs> because they behaved well, especially the little kids, and the rest would get them on the next day. But um, In Mexico, we used to have a big party, a huge party. People here uh, decorate their houses a lot, like since the beginning of November. There was also a lot more Christmas shopping than, I'm, than what I'm used to. Yeah. Like, I usually don't do that much, but yeah. The exchange program is an incredibly enriching experience, but it must have been scary to go so far from home all on your own. On this topic, we decided to ask our exchange students about what made them want to partake in the program. So I want to speak English more, more fluently. I'm done the high school in Mexico, so I, I want to improve my English. Uh, and maybe, I don't know, in a future, live here or study college or have a family here, yeah. So my dad suggested me to take this program because we uh, uh, got one girl from Australia, so she was in the same program and then my dad uh, thought that it, was, it would be a good idea for me to come here, so. I saw a lot <laughs> of beautiful a... pictures before, before I came here and I was like, yeah, that's yeah. it, I want to see it in real life. It is good on the resume. You're independent, I guess, and that's a big part of being independent from your parents because you're on your own, basically. 
Everyone loves food. It's the center of every family gathering. So when we got the chance to talk with our exchange students, we couldn't help but ask them about the foods that they miss from home. Spicy food. <laughs> I really miss the spicy food. And, and for me, the spicy food here, it's nothing. So I really miss the spicy food from Mexico. 어, 모든 한국 음식이 그리운 것 같아요. 그 중에서도 밥이 제일 그립네요. I miss like soy and the foods use soy, soy sauce and like sushi. Uh, I think tacos. <laughs> they have a different version for Mexican tacos that is not real tacos and taquitos that you can find in at the Irving. It's really different and we call it flautas. So it's for me that's not tacos, but probably soaps. Yeah, that's the schnitzel. <laughs> yeah, schnitzel, definitely schnitzel. <laughs> My mom's uh, cooking skills, yeah. I miss them. Why are Michelle's not good enough for you? No. Oh. I, miss, I, I miss my I, I miss my grandma's cooking as well. Yeah, I miss cheese and real dark bread. Yeah, bread here is bread. Bread. Yeah. Bread. <laughs> bread is a whole different culture in Germany. <laughs> yeah. We are so grateful to have these awesome students in our building. So if you're looking to host an exchange student in your home, you can find the link on the school website. Now, over to Olivia with Student Passions. Everyone has a passion or hobby that they love to do. Whether it's an interest that's been going on for a while or an interest that's just starting to develop, you can make anything into a good business with a plan and a passion that you have. Today we're going to talk to some successful students who have turned their passions into businesses. Hi, my name's Ian Curran and I have many passions, but the passion I make uh, money with is music. Uh, my entrepreneurial adventures mainly revolve around my musical pursuits, so I have multiple different businesses that kind of flow together, if you will. So I have a bagpipe business where I'll play bagpipes at funerals, at birthdays, at parties, at you know ceremonies, events, that kind of thing. I also own a DJ business where I uh, party it up, if you will, and I... Uh, play at different events, play at school dances, I play at birthday parties as well. Um, and I also like to produce and write my own music and put it on Spotify. So I guess you could consider that a business as well. I didn't really kind of decide necessarily to start a business. It was more of a natural flow that kind of happened for me. So, we, you know, with bagpiping, uh, when people kind of get the word out that, oh, there's a, there's a you know, there's a bagpiper in town. Um, people will just naturally you know kind of ask you hey can you come play at this funeral or can you come play at my wedding and so just kind of through that i guess through all these inquiries you know i guess the word got out more and more that you know i play the pipes and i'm up for hire so same with djing as well it just kind of you know naturally kind of the business sort of naturally started and naturally came to be within learning the instrument learning to dj learning to produce music I have no plans on uh, stopping my business. I think that it is it is a good pastime, a good hobby, and you know, most of my funds that I, I take from these these things go towards either um, the passion, the hobby itself, or it goes towards uh, my schooling. So I really don't see any negatives um, towards these hobbies. So I I can see them continuing in the future for sure. So you can uh, you can find my my services. I have a, a Facebook page for my bagpiping service. Um, so you can just shoot me a message on Facebook. I have an email, and you can follow me on Spotify and uh, Apple Music as well if you'd like to listen to some of my music. Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a grade 12 student, and my passion is videography. I uh, do promotional videography for local businesses as well as wedding videos for couples across the province. Um, so that would be like little videos of a wedding day um, where you hear the audio of vows, um, the ceremony, speeches, all that kind of thing mixed with music and just moments throughout the day. Um, so I travel all over the province um, just filming people's weddings. So I originally started with promotional videography, making like short videos um, showcasing local businesses or events um, in spring of 2019. 
Um, and then I also did my first couple weddings in 2019. Then the pandemic hit, so there was a bit of a break um, during 2020. But then in 2021, I got back into weddings. And now, yeah, that's what I do more than the promotional side. But both are really awesome. Yes, I do plan to um, continue my business after I graduate. I actually have a ton of weddings um, this summer, and I've also booked some weddings in, all the way in 2023, so after my first year of university and during my second year. So this is definitely a business I'll be continuing, and um, I think it will definitely require a lot of hard work and time management during university, but I am pretty confident that I'll be able to continue it, especially with all the support that the school has given me and helped me figure out how to run this business. So you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Emily B Films, A-M-E-L-I-E B Films. Um, and then you can also go to my website, which is www.amelybarham.com, A-M-E-L-I-E-B-A-R-H-A-M.com. Um, and there's a contact form there where people can fill out, whether that's a business or a wedding, um, looking for a video, and yeah, I'll get back to you. Hi, my name is Devin, and I do wood burning. I basically just draw a picture on wood and then burn it onto it so it's there forever. <laughs> My dad got me a really crappy burner for Christmas one year, <laughs> so I got into it. I mean, I have a Facebook page right now, DC Designs. Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm a grade 12 student at St. Stephen High School, and I run a nonprofit kickball business. So I decided to start selling cake pops because first of all, I love baking and it's one of my favorite passions. Um, but I also saw a great need in our community for menstrual products. Um, during the pandemic, our local food bank needed a lot of help. And fortunately, a lot of businesses and just generous families and schools in town um, helped them out by donating some non-perishable food items. But I didn't see anyone really donating a lot of menstrual products. And I knew that it was a huge need in our community. Um, because, and it always, not always, but it often goes unnoticed, um, this need for menstrual products. So I decided to help the food bank out and started a fundraiser for them. I think it was figuring out how and where to sell them. At first, um, the people I, were, I was selling my cake pops to were mostly my friends, which is great, but I wanted to spread menstrual awareness and the need for these products and just um, to address the stigma against them too. Um, so I didn't want to just use my, so my social media account, so I turned to uh, my local church where I attend, and I started um, a quick um, fundraiser there too, and that was really great because I got to reach out to a lot of um, different people with all the diverse backgrounds. So right now, um, you can contact me through my social media accounts, or you can, sometimes I'll have them at the Something Spring Cafe downtown. Um, and if I do end up having my K-pop still, I'll usually post on my Instagram account just to let everyone know that it's there for people to take. Our students work hard to make products to sell at good quality and are exemplary at what they do. They have a lot of passions and aren't afraid to show it to the world. Don't forget to check out the students' websites and social media to see their products or services. Stay tuned next month when we look into students who are pursuing their passions as hobbies. Thank you for watching Spartan TV.